Hi folks, let's make a set of soft jaws. We're actually gonna reuse a set from one of our CNC training classes. Uh, Eric and Justin did a really nice job on these, including marking where their offset was. One of the things I love about these monster jaws is they are reversible. So we held them upright in the first operation back in the class. Today, we can flip them over and get another side out of them. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Standard adaptive recipe in aluminum, Lakeshore carbide, three flute, quarter inch end mill, 5,100 RPMs, which is 333 service feet per minute, 21 inches per minute or two thou per tooth, 50 thou optimal load, that's 20% of the tool's diameter. And this matters because this is a 3D adaptive. Maximum roughing step down of a quarter inch, so that's 100% of the tool diameter. Fine step down, of 25 thousandths and so what that does is it helps us subject to the 25 thou step down rough out the side walls of this part for so long we advocated using a one thousandth of an inch per tooth but really we find that the tormach can easily handle two thousandths of an inch per tooth and you can see the chips they look better uh, they've got some meat to them and tools want to cut let them cut We walk along this bottom slot so that when we use this ball end mill to scallop, we're not having to cut with the center of that tool where there's very little surface footage per minute and there's no practical chip evacuation. It's really pushing the material, not shearing or cutting it. 5,100 RPMs, max RPMs at 1,000th of an inch per tooth, which is 10 inches per minute. Your normal 2D contour would have a linking move, this sort of lead in, and then it's gonna run all the way to the end, which means your tool is gonna to go past where we actually want it to. So the way we get to the tool path I want here, which is to lead in from one side, but stay short on the other side, two things. In the last tab, linking. Uncheck, lead in and lead out. And on the second tab, geometry. Add a tangential extension distance on the lead in. It's a positive number and that causes the tool to start to the outside of the part. But the tangential end extension, which you get by adding a separate tangential end extension checkbox, is negative slightly more than the radius of the tool and that keeps it shy of the end of our slot. Scalloping out the surfacing tool path, we're using a 3 8 inch ball end mill from Lakeshore. Max RPM, which is about 500 surface feet, 30 inches a minute, that's a three thousandths of an inch per tooth. But remember from our speeds and feeds video on chip thinning, we're actually taking no more than a radial step over of 0.025. Why 0.025? Because in our adaptive, we left five thousandths radial stock, but we also set a fine step down of 0.025. That means the maximum radial engagement of these stair steps should be about 25 thousandths. And why I show this is that even though we programmed three thousandths of an inch per tooth, which is the 30 inches a minute, we're really only cutting about half of that due to chip thinning. Scallop is one of the better tool paths, especially for this sort of surfacing and finishing because it maintains a constant step over regardless of how steep or shallow the wall is. There is a trick though to getting this tool path what I consider to be pretty nice and smooth and constant. We'll show that at the end of the video. Because if you don't do that trick, what you're gonna notice is this, the tool path wants to dip in to our dowel pin hole. And there's nothing wrong with that. It wouldn't necessarily hurt here, but especially on higher feed rate machines, that's extra motion that causes unnecessary movement. And we don't want that. Quick spot. In full disclosure, I actually manually jogged this down a little deeper off camera because it's a slight sidewall there and I wanted to make sure my spot drill was deep enough so that here, when we drill it, 
with the uh, pre-ream drill, the drill didn't walk on us. In other words, the both flutes of the drill were fully supported within the spot section. And a lot of times I don't even program drills like this. I just stick them in the Tormach, I know I'm over center, and I just jog up and down. Works great. Drilling out with a letter D drill, that should be about 246, which leaves us about four thousandths of an inch, or about 0.1 millimeter. .2505 reamer, and I don't adjust the RPM here on the drill press, although the rule of thumb that I've always heard for reaming is half the speed, twice the feed. So you run at slower RPMs, twice the feed rate down. What I love, though, is that pop test. Sweet. DeWalt Impact, definitely the way to swap out your speed vice jaws. And see that little short screw? Go to McMaster car, socket, head, cap screws, low profile. This is almost always half 13, one inch. These things are a lifesaver. The problem with this soft jaw is I need to make sure the cap screw doesn't interfere with the fact that I'm trying to fit a one inch cylinder in here. The low profile is the way to go. Dowel pin to give me the repeatable X location, really important for when we flip the part to machine it to correct length. And we're done. Folks, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. One of the things I like about this video is it's a great rebuttal to machining the wren shape where we didn't do as good a job uh, as we should or anyone should on work holding. This took a few minutes to make these soft jaws, but it's the right way to securely hold, in this case, a piece of A2 tool steel that we're gonna machine in its annealed state, which is not too hard to do, along with some hardened, you know, really 55, 60 Rockwell parts next week, folks. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon. For those of you that want to see the Fusion 360 trick on Scallop, I want a really smooth tool path. And Rob Lockwood, who has a great YouTube channel, inspired me to look more and research more into understanding what a really good tool path is and looks like. The trick here is the, I want the Scallop to ignore this trough and this hole. So hop into patch. What I did was created this patch. That allows me to have a smooth surface for the cam to look at and analyze, but not affect my model, not have to have different versions of it. How do we make that? I'll admit this stumped me at first because I kept getting this broken patch. The problem was I was selecting this chain, including this drop dip sec section here. What we need was a circular sketch that closed this off. So how do we do that? Hop back into model, sketch. Create sketch. I'm gonna create on this plane. I'm gonna do S, keyboard shortcut for ARC, tangent arc, one, two. Look at that. Stop sketch. Now, hop back into patch, create a patch, and pick our sketch that we just created and we now have the patch that we need, which is perfect. How do you implement that in CAM? Switch back into the CAM environment. On our scallop, right click, edit, geometry tab, check the model box, expand the part, the soft jaw, and here's that body nine that we just made. We can actually click that right there. We don't even have to click something over here. And that gives it the right input to know to take that into account as it computes this toolpath. Folks, thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.